last time, I mentioned that it was the increase in my ability to love the unlovable in my life that was proof that God is real. So here's the question. Who are the very first people that come to your mind when you hear the phrase, the unlovable? That's what we're going to explore in this video. Now, my name is Charles, and this is a simple, not shallow video. A video for those who want a deeper faith, not a confusing one. See, that is what our name is all about, really. Keeping faith in Christ simple. Well, simple enough that a child like myself can understand it. And yet, not so shallow that when the storms of life hit, our faith is forced to run aground. See, we want a faith it's like a good cup of coffee, really. Simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. <laughs> mm. Here we go. <laughs> so, who are the unlovable in your life? Is it, well, that homeless person who has not bathed in over a month and is now standing right beside you, breathing in your face? Is it that person who's always cruel and condescending to you? Is it a member of the opposing political party? Now, while only you can answer that for yourself, allow me to focus on some that might not have immediately come to your mind. See, what about that church member who always shoots down every single idea you have simply because it's not theirs? Or worse yet, simply because it is yours. Or how about that one who thinks that he has an inside track in the true Christianity, and so he knows the best way, the only way to worship and love God? You know the one, the one who is never content until he has had his or her two cents put into every single conversation that they can rush into. Oh, oh, let us not forget to mention that Christian who has a slightly different take on our favorite Bible passage or our favorite Christian idea. You know the one, the one that we are very tempted to quickly deem a heretic. Now, did a particular name come to your mind? It would not be surprising if one or two did. Not surprising, and yet also very sad. And what is even more tragic than that is that Jesus knew we would consider our brothers and sisters in Christ to be so unlovely. Indeed, he knew this so well that he was compelled to issue a command to love one another. I Loving should be second nature to those who claim to love Jesus, right? And yet, all too often, this family is torn apart through lovelessness, often from a very self-centered idea that we do indeed know better about most everything related to God, really. For instance, should we be sprinkled or dunked when it comes to baptism? Should we use a contemporary worship service with upbeat music or a traditional worship service with more reverential music? Should we baptize our infants or not? Is that against all the Bible stands for? Or even, I have heard it argued, what is sinful and what is not? And there are no love lost in any of that argument. And in truth, the list, well, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. It is, tragically, not hard to hear the charge of heresy being made over the slightest of disagreements. So what happens when we are not being loving? Well, I have seen people wielding baseball bats, figuratively speaking, but all the while claiming as they were doing so that they were only speaking the truth in love. 
if that was the way they spoke in love, I really would never want to see them say anything in an unloving manner. Though, though, while I can honestly say that I have never seen such a baseball bat being used lovingly, I have seen people loving their use of one. Well, because wielding them made them feel righteously good. For at least they were doing something to correct a wrong, right? Yeah. And Jesus knew that we would do this, that we would treat our siblings with both disrespect and ill will. For he said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. I'm not asking you to do what I have not done, but you also must love one another. He also says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Not if you have the right style of worship, not if you have a holy looking building, not if you always say and do the godly things, not even how right you are in your beliefs or how quick you are to correct that errant knave who is always getting it wrong. No. It is how you show love to the unlovely in your life, to your fellow Christians that will draw others to Christ. This is the proof that those who are not a part of God's family need to see in order to know that Christ is real and in order to know that we are indeed his followers. Now, please do not mistake what is being said. There are indeed wrong ideas and there are indeed heretical beliefs and these do need to be addressed and corrected. Yet. If we are truly following the command of Christ to love, well, we may find that we can begin to speak softly while never carrying a big stick. I mean, big sticks have their place. You know, walking down a dark alley is a good place to have one. Walking on a wilderness trail, you know, helps you keep your balance. And baseball bats are even quite exceptionally useful in playing a game of baseball, right? But never is a big stick of much use when dealing with a broken humanity that is in desperate need of love. Now I know, I know, I know, I know. It is much more difficult to love than to judgmentally correct someone, than to be very judgmental. There is no doubt about it. And I also know that when things are impossible for us to do, they are not impossible for God to bring about. This is very simple, and yet it requires you to not be shallow. Are you up for it? Are you up for learning how to love simply, wisely, and well? Will you venture into the depths I hope so, for your sake. For in the raging storm, it is never safe to be in the shallows. Well, what do you think? Please tell me in the comment section below. Also in the description box below, I will list all the Bible passages that I used, and I will list them in the order that I reference them. That way you can check me out, make sure I'm not making any of this up, or that I'm out completely in left field. For while I am left-handed, I don't like being out in left field. It's a cold and lonely place to be. <laughs> also, if you like this video, please click that like and the subscribe button and then make sure to click that gray notification bell and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new video is posted. Also, I have something very exciting to share. We now have a podcast version of this video available. You can simply go to simplenotshallow.com and download it there or Subscribe to the podcast, the Simple Not Shallow podcast, to the podcast service of your choice. You know, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, whichever one you use. And that way you can listen whatever you happen to be doing. You know, driving your car, walking your dog, taking your morning jog, whatever 
wherever, whenever. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll catch you next time.